first guitar I bought was a black Les Paul copy. It was probably made in Korea or something, but it was a really good guitar because it looked cool. And it also didn't sound too bad and it, it always stayed in tune, so I was really happy with that. That was a good guitar to start out with, I just played for years on that guitar. But once I started to sort of need a bit more out of the guitar, I bought a Epiphone, but I always lost it after you know, a proper Gibson Les Paul, I got a, that, um, I still have that, my first Gibson Les Paul standard, which I bought in Nashville at the Gibson factory outlets, that was a big purchase for me, I just love that guitar, I still do. I've always loved the Les Paul shape and I always gravitated towards the Les Paul guitars, uh, influenced by players like Manny, obviously. And um, you know Paul Kossoff and all those greats and when I got this guitar uh, I reached heaven because I always dreamt about a Gibson Les Paul standard American made and uh, uh, it's also features on the cover of the first uh, Fluffy Jackets EP and um, actually almost sold it uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> But then I thought, what the hell am I doing? I can't sell this guitar. It's sort of a fluffy jackets history piece. So, so I'm going to hang on to it. Um, and then uh, this is my second Gibson Les Paul. This is actually a custom shop uh, from Wildwood Guitars in uh, Colorado. They're a Gibson dealer in the, in the States. And um, these... Uh, Gibsons that they retail there they have some special features they have like a long tenon uh, neck joint and they also have uh, you know like some long uh, anchors screwed onto the body to give it more resonance and they have some amazing flame tops as you can see this is a beautiful guitar lightweight and uh, great wood uh, it's from 2011, I think, Gibson Custom Shop, 1960 reissue, uh, thin neck, which I like, so beautiful guitar. Um, the next guitar is uh, Eric Clapton Signature Stratocaster uh, from, I believe, 2009. Uh, beautiful guitar as well, Custom Shop. It actually has a battery uh, uh, active circuitry inside the guitar. Uh, I was a bit skeptical, you know, to, to have that uh, at the start because I thought, well, what if the battery runs out in the middle of a gig? Then I have to screw up the back of it and replace the uh, the battery. Uh, but but the, that's never happened. It's sort of, you know, last forever that battery. So my fear is unfounded, and it's a great guitar. Plays very well. Um, really robust and sounds great. Um, next guitar is a recent acquisition, it's basically um, a Telecaster, it's a 1950s reissue, uh, limited edition, it's made only 150 of this um, guitar, it's a special color, uh, California surf green or sea foam green type thing and um, it sounds amazing, it is amazing, it has a lovely fat neck to it and a, a great Telecaster sound, as they should sound, you know, like really bite to it. So it uh, sounds great and sounds completely different to the other ones, but it's uh, it's lovely, lovely guitar. Um, the last guitar I have is a uh, rock and roll history piece from 1975, it's Manny's old Flying V guitar uh, that he used on uh, the Nazareth albums Playing the Game and Expect No Mercy. Um, and uh, it, it, you know, he's, it's amazing. He, he used it on several other albums as well. Features on the cover of um, Sharp Reloaded, I believe. And um, uh, I acquired this in 2015 from Manny. And uh, I will always treasure this guitar. Uh, I actually have a separate piece 
on this uh, video that you can see so you learn more about it then. That's about it for my guitars. Uh, some really good guitars which I love to play around with. And uh, that's it for me. Rock on!